Well, if you got a dollar, won't just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. Hey, this is Patrick, the trusty Huxter Mercantile, going on location about an hour uh, outside Chicago, about an hour from the trusty hideout. And uh, we are in Ottawa, Illinois, right off I-80. You can probably hear it in the background. Uh, the Matthew Bullock Auction House and Main Street Estate Sales. So it's actually an auction house. I have actually gotten some things from them uh, in the auction itself on picking it up here. Uh, but then they also have for items that don't sell in the auction, or they might, I think they build it. I don't actually know how the, the estate sale side works, but sometimes I think they're auction pieces. Sometimes I think they're just consignment pieces, whatever. They have a massive showroom with all kinds of variety of vintage, antique, and sometimes contemporary mixed in uh, that I always love to check out. So I haven't been here in a couple months and uh, excited to see what we've got uh, in store at Matthew Bullock Auction and Main Street Estate Sales in Ottawa, Illinois. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to show these as well as I'd like, but hopefully you can get a look that we've got some vintage playground equipment. Check out that panda. It's a little riding kid's toy on a big spring that would have been mounted. So you've got the panda. Uh, what's he? The dog with jowls? Maybe I'm not sure what that is. And then we got the tiger off to the side so they do still kind of bounce you know it's not mounted so I don't want to shake them too much but you can totally see a kid you know riding on the back of that one and then this one it looks like what is he oh we got a bunny rabbit so he's not on his uh, spring and I don't see that anywhere so it looks like these are being he's just being sold as is I don't see a tag on any of these so i don't know what they cost if i can figure it out i'll add it into the video but i just thought that like i said this is one of my favorite places and uh they always have fun stuff and this is definitely not uh, disappointing so i'm going to go ahead and show this in a video because i think i've decided i'm not going to get it but i just wanted to show this because this is a very cool piece it's just a vintage canister with a paperboard top See if I can get it off with one hand. So you can see it's just a paperboard, kind of thinner than a cardboard lid. Got a little bit of a little bit of damage on it because it is hard to get off. Metal rim on the top, metal bottom. It's only four dollars, and it's got this cool graphic on it. It's just it's a little large to ship. If I was going to keep my booth. I would buy it for the booth, but since I have to shut down my booth next week, it seems silly to buy something uh, for the booth. But for only four bucks, I mean, there's definitely some money to be made this. A little bit of damage to the art, but this is just, you know, it's got the seagulls, the buoy, you know, you kind of got a sea scene on it. But it's probably 18 inches tall and about 12 inches across, so it would have to go in a pretty big box. And uh, it's lightweight but it would cost a lot to ship. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be picking this up, but just another cool item at Matthew Bullock. So they always have a great selection of bottles, advertising tins, kitchen containers. Uh, so this is just, you know, showcase some of the glassware they've got. At some point, I'm still hoping that Cindy will do a deep dive with me on uh, canning jars because I know virtually nothing about them. Uh, the one thing she did teach me somewhere along the line uh, when I was talking to her is that the older ones on the inside have the milk glass liners and that those are the ones that tend to go for a little bit more money. Um, they're never like super valuable but uh, if you're trying to compare new to old and more valuable to less valuable uh, definitely looking for that milk glass center or liner is good and so this one you know it's only listed for four bucks and comparing that to Modern ball, they put that one as four bucks too, so they're actually not even differentiating the fact that this ball jar uh, has the milk glass liner in it. She also showcased when, hopefully she'll do this in her deep dive, I don't know if that one qualifies or not, that when the 
swirl at the end of ball has an extra loop and I think that's what she was talking about. That tended to be a little bit older as well compared to, well, no, they all seem to be about the same. So maybe that's not what she was talking about. Yeah, so it just gives me reason to do another deep dive. But this is a selection of glass at uh, Matthew Bullock. So this is a very cool uh, layout that they did for some of their bigger pieces of furniture. So you've got all this white leather, but the struggle is real. They separate it with caution tape and put the sign, do not step on it with wet or dirty shoes. Got to keep it white. As you approach a piece like this, there's a couple of hints of what this actually is. First, you've got some uh, hinges at the top, so you know that it's gonna open up. And then as you work your way down, you see foot pedals. So you probably know what this is. It is a pump organ. I find these fascinating in many ways because it's only 60 bucks. So it's not the greatest condition. You know, some of the keys are definitely, you know, some of the, uh, the uh, veneer is chipped off or missing completely. But the wood is in pretty good condition. It's got some really nice detail, you know, East Lake aesthetic design. Love, love the handle that you use to lift it up. Um, you know, whether it's functional or not, it would just look, it'd be a very impressive piece of furniture. And you've got, as all organs would, You've got the stops, so when you pull out all the stops, the organ gets really loud. So there's your history lesson for the day. When you pull out all the stops, you're referring, it came from the term of an old organ. Just a really cool piece, <laughs> be quite a bit to ship it, but 60 bucks for a definitely a conversational starter in your living room. So this is one of the fun things that I like about doing estate sales or places like this that pick up uh, old estates. You get the work, you know, all in one place, the work of an individual artist. So this is a collection of carvings, all done uh, by the same person. Uh, they're all signed by Joe Dillett. Uh, this one just says J Dillett, but on the back. Uh, it shows that this was a Joe Dillett class project. And it doesn't say which class. Like, I'm assuming this is not a grade school project. So maybe high school, maybe college. Uh, who knows? But it shows, uh, you know, kind of a history. Very simple relief of a pear and then of a horse that's been colored. But, you know, pretty naively done. You know, the very rough edges on the sides of the horse. The two that have been um, painted uh, actually says right on the back who they were painted by. Looks like Mark Harmon. Well, so these could be valuable. Who knows? I have a feeling that's not the one. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure how old they are. You can see the sizes of the wood is you know written in the top up there. Um, yeah, so those are kind of simpler. The eagle, I think, developed. There was a little bit more detail compared to the horse. You can see how the leaves were done. But then he moved into this style of this tulip that is just you know a really nice relief. Um, that has then been varnished. I mean, just, it's a, just a really nice looking project. But then this is the same person. So where did this come in? Because he got really good. Because this one is basically carved all the way out, you know, to a full relief of a Madonna and child. It's just an it's amazingly well detailed piece. I mean, this is something if I get, I probably would put it on Etsy. Because uh, it's got the quality that definitely people would be interested in. Um, yeah, so again, it's unfortunate. It'd be nice if things like this could stay together, but, you know, if families don't want to keep it for their own sentimental value in an estate sale, they will get split up, and that's what's going to happen here, because I'm going to buy at least one of these, uh, maybe more, and uh, see what happens. So I don't know where they're always sourcing their items, but this is something you don't see every day, a collection of vintage soda fountain uh, chairs. So they are chair height, not quite stool height. Uh, stools sort of think be even cooler, but you see the you know the bright colors, the aqua and the tangerine you know color. You can see because of the way they're stacked, you know how this would have been bolted to the floor. Um, well, maybe they are stools, but they don't look very tall. So they would have been bolted to the floor though, and they're stacked up in here. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen of these in the different colors. They're selling them individually. So you've got the soda fountain, uh, 80 bucks a piece, but I can tell by the uh, age of the tag, they've been here a while, which means they're gonna be discounted from there. 
Um, so again, these look like cast iron bases, so it's going to be these would be expensive to ship. But you know, even if you just pick up a pair for a little, you know, side part of your kitchen or basement, uh, this would look great in Jeffrey's uh, basement um, from Real Nifty Vintage. Uh, just a fun collection that again, something you just don't see every day. So in a case of you should buy with your head, not with your heart, I'm going to completely ignore my head because I can't walk away from this. I've never seen a Lazy Susan like this that's so complete. I didn't even know there was such a thing as the center bowl that then also had another center bowl to go into it. So I try to do a little, some quick digging, uh, Google Lens, um, I can't find a maker on these. Um, it is glass, so it's a white or milk glass with the black drip, uh, you know, spaghetti uh, across it. But it also has what I hope is the original um, tray, but it's not marked either. But it does have, if you can see it here, you can see there are indentations for the pieces, and these do fit in the indentation. So I do think that this is original. It's probably all of its money, but I just, I love it. And I won't use it. I'm definitely going to sell it. Um, so I, uh, by the time I post this, I may or may not have actually bought it. But um, this is just really cool. And it's one of those things you don't know what you don't know. So sometimes coming to places like this that just have a little bit of everything, you will see design, you'll see aesthetic, you'll see pieces that you think, ah, eh, you know, those kind of Lazy Susan sets don't really go for a lot of money. They're not all that interesting. And then you come across something like this, which puts it on a whole new level. And, um, yeah, I think I'm going to buy it. So, just like everywhere else, I'm always on the lookout for coasters. And these are ones I have never seen before. So, there's three. They're all marked as pear point. Uh, so this is saying it's a cup plate. So I don't know if this is technically a saucer. So this one has a little bit more of a rim to it. So it's like raised up. This one's kind of flat. And then this one is like kind of between the two. So the center point I think would be okay for a really small glass. But I think all three of these would be very difficult to use as an actual coaster. So the fact that they're calling them cup plates makes me wonder if this is some sort of an underplate for a specific, you know, a coffee mug or something like that. Um, what's nice about this one is it actually has the pair point glass uh, sticker on it. So I'm going to pick this one up. It's amber glass, which is my favorite color. It's actually showing an early glass press so that's the image that's on it. it's a glass pressing machine which I just think that's super cool so I don't know if I would use it as a coaster but I think it's something I could put on display and I think it's pretty cool the two clear ones I'm probably gonna leave behind this one's the Battle of Bunker Hill which you know I'm in Chicago so um, Okay, that was like a really weird statement to make, but, you know, it's not like we're really in the middle of our colonial and revolutionary war periods. And then this one... Well, it's a profile of somebody. I'm going to assume it's George Washington. Um, and this one, again, it's super... It's got this really sheer, you know, drop to it that again I just it seems like it's such a small inner circle I don't see that that would be again for a coaster but maybe like a mug so I'm going to leave those two here and pick this one up and uh, do a little bit more research on it and who knows I might start a new collection of cup plates I don't know why but I've always been a fan of biscuit jars. I don't know, just because I like the idea that I'm eating a biscuit instead of eating a cookie. It sounds healthier. Um, most of them are a little bit smaller. <sighs> this is probably my big, my idea of really a biscuit jar. You can hold a lot of cookies in this one. Um, you know, it's got 
the individual lid, you know, decent condition, couple, you know, well, actually I say that, but it looks like there's a couple cracks in there. Uh, I hadn't seen that when I peeked it before. Um, you know, the handle on it, they, they sell replacement handles. So this is one of those cases that when you're buying them, particularly, you know, for yourself or even for resale, you always want to make sure that you think it's original. This one is showing some of the metal through it. So I'm going to assume that this is original. This is not a reproduction um, handle. In some cases, you know, if you don't have the handle, you have to do reproduction. So it's not necessarily going to kill the value, but you at least want to know what you're getting. You know, so this one has the original handle. Unfortunately, a little bit of damage in the lid. Um, looks like it, when I looked before, it looked like the actual inside of the jar, like there were no cracks, there's nothing seriously missing, you know, a little bit of a flea bite there. That's one of the made in Japan. It's not marked in any other way, just made in Japan. So they're relatively common. They don't go for a lot of money. Uh, this one's no exception. Uh, the price tag on this is $8, you know, regular price. And I think it's been here long enough. There's probably a discount on it. Um, so, you know, they don't go flying off the shelves, but they are kind of a cool look. Uh, I think they look great in a vintage kitchen. You know, I think the colors on this one, you know, I think they're supposed to be cherries, but they've darkened into like a, almost a plum burgundy color. It's just kind of a cool color combination. And if that's what your decor looks like, it just would look kind of cool sitting in the back, uh, whether it's holding your biscuits or not. So one of the things always to keep your eye out in places like this or estate sales, they're always going to have a mix. So you're definitely going to find some vintage, but then you're going to find some not so vintage. So this one actually caught my eye because it's a gift pack that I've never seen before. It's for NASCAR, but it's a NASCAR Pez dispenser that comes with a truck. And I don't know why. <laughs> it says uh, it's the Daytona 500, 50 years. You know, so the truck is you know part of the promotional packet. You see, there's all the Pez back there. You know, probably not good Pez because I found the date on it. It's 2004, so I don't think Pez. I don't know if Pez has an expiration date, but I think it'd be pretty stale. So it just says it's a, a special gift pack, I guess because of the anniversary. Um, so it's not, unlike a lot of NASCAR, which are spe for specific drivers, this one is just promoting NASCAR as a whole. So I'm not sure if there's a huge market for this, but I think it's fun. And I think, you know, Pez lovers as well as NASCAR lovers would, you know, kind of get a kick out of it. And it's cheap enough that I'm just going to pick it up and, you know, probably just sell it in a live sale um, because they're... You know, it's inexpensive and it's fun. And sorry, Kathy, looks like you're losing out. I'm taking it home with me. So different estate sales or places like this are going to, you know, work toys and games differently. Here it's all in one room. And so, you know, as long as there aren't any kids present, you know, sometimes it's worth going through and, you know, mixing through the new collection and looking into some of the vintage pieces. And uh, sometimes you find something fun. One of them being this set right here. It's an Auto Bridge Deluxe Edition for beginners. Still has the original instruction booklet, and then the little counters for you know uh, counting out um, playing bridge. Still don't know how to play it, but it's a cool, cool, cool item, and it's an inexpensive price, so it's coming home with me. So just like in an estate sale, you're always going to find a mix of things. What I like about Matthew Bullock is they'll just kind of gather, even if it's from multiple estates, they'll gather it together. So, you know, you get all the ruby red glassware, you know, some of the porcelain, the decorative, you know, decorative items. And then today we have pay dirt owls. So, you know, owls are very popular in the vintage community right now, as, you know, pretty much always. And so most likely, this was a collection of owls from an individual estate, and they are all now available here. And again, uh, the way they'll work is the longer they stay, the cheaper the price. So they'll list them at list price, uh, hoping they sell for that, and usually at very competitive prices. Um, and then if they've been here long enough, they'll mark them down. Been here longer, they'll mark them down even further. Uh, up to 75% off. So, you know, it's one of those cases that sometimes they're not the highest quality because it's just somebody's collection. It's just a mix. But if you're looking for owls or any sort of specific uh, collection, if you time it right and watch all their advertising, you might get a good collection and uh, a nice variety to choose from. 
So again, when you clean out an estate sale, you get uh, you know collections of sets, you know things that have been stored away, maybe boxed up, never used, and uh, sometimes you come across a uh, real goodie, like this. It's the complete 13-piece old-fashioned home and party ice cream soda set. Uh, it does say it comes with 50 sweetheart sparkle straws. Unfortunately, those are not uh, in there. But if I can open this up. You have the complete set. So it has the glasses okay. in their original okay. uh, metal holders. And they do come out for cleaning. So that those count as two pieces. So you've got the four glasses, four holders. You then have the metal ice cream scoop and four long handled spoons. Two pink and two blue. So the straws are missing. Those probably would have been there. Mm -hmm. So somebody must have used the straws. But it doesn't look like they used anything else because the ice cream scoop and the spoons are still tied up with the original rickrack through the original box. So I don't think this was ever uh, taken out and used. So it's still got its original box. It's a great price. I'm going to pick that up and I think that'll be fun probably to resell in one of the live sales. And then sometimes you get even more surprises when you're setting up to do a video. You sit on something you want, which is this. This is a Manhattan uh, by Anchor Hawking uh, Manhattan pattern uh, depression glass with uh, chop plate serving platter. Anchor Hawking did this in a competition to Hazel Atlas's crisscross. And I already have one of these, but this is a really good price, so I'm going to buy another one. And this I'm going to keep for myself. So that was my trip to Matthew Bullock Auction House and Main Street. No. Yeah, no. Main Street Estate Sales? I don't remember. I'll put the exact uh, name in the, in the comments uh, for the video. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed uh, some of the shopping along uh, with me. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a mini haul video here at the end because I did show as I was going through highlighting some of the pieces that I actually picked up while I was filming but I did pick up a few things that I had not thought to film. So I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, those here and just tie this into one uh, full video. The sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you run into things that you've seen before or you've heard talked about before. And so this ends up being where these videos come into play. You know, if you're still watching this, hopefully you are interested in what I found and why I picked it up. Sometimes you, like I said, you get lucky. Uh, this next piece I've actually ca uh, carried before and I've actually sold it before. So I knew exactly what it was. But the very first time I picked it up, it was because I had paid attention to other videos. Specifically, Crazy Lamp Lady talking about Murano glass and different types of where the glass is made, including controlled bubbles. Now, controlled bubbles is, carries a myriad, uh, there are myriad definitions of it and myriad uses of it, and not all of them are Murano. This is one of them, and it is a single bubble sitting down at the very bottom. So, you know, unfortunately, you're getting my head in here too, but so hopefully you can kind of see that. It's literally in the base of this bud vase is a single bubble. On this bud vase also happens to be a poem. That says, chance cannot change my love, nor time impair. All right, not much of a poem, but, you know, so it, there's a little etched phrase on there. This, the first time I saw it, I was attracted by the single bubble, because clearly a talented glassmaker uh, would have made that. I was less impressed by the cheesy saying on it, but whatever, you know, some people like that. So I had done some digging the first time I came across it and discovered this is actually Steuben. So it's a very high quality uh, uh, glass manufacturer, S-T-E-U-B-E-N, Steuben. Uh, Steuben glass that, once you know that, it suddenly makes what you will find on the bottom a little bit easier to read. Now I don't know if this is gonna, uh, if this will actually focus well enough to show it. Um,
Well, you can kind of see there's a little bit of writing along the top, right along the edge. It is a script uh, signature that says Steuben or Steuben. So this is a high quality glass. Now, what I find interesting about this one is Matthew Bullock knows what they're doing. You know, they're going to know all the names. They knew what this was and they did price it accordingly. However, no criticism to Matthew Bullock in case they actually watch this video. I love you guys. Uh, but they made the choice when they put the price tag on, they actually put the price tag on the bottom and they did not indicate the manufacturer on the label. So anyone who did not know what this was would not have known it was Steuben and it was priced as a piece of Steuben glass. Luckily for me, it had been there long enough that it had been marked down. So I still paid up for it because half price of expensive is still expensive, but I've sold it before so I know what it can sell for. And I felt that even though I'm not going to make the multiples that I'm typically used to making, because of the what I paid and what I know it can go for, I'm going to make enough of a dollar amount that totally justifies me buying a probably, well, this might have to go into the 12 by six by six box, maybe the six, yeah, I don't think it'll fit, it might fit in the eight, but regardless, it will justify me caught the purchase of one of those boxes and packing, packing materials to go into it to make the money selling a piece of Steuben. And if I remember correctly, the first one I had did not last long in my Etsy store. It sold very quickly. So I'm hoping this will happen again, and I'm really happy to have picked it up. To a covered gold rimmed box. Uh, this is another case. Please, Matthew Bullock, I love you. Not a criticism, uh, but an odd uh, pricing choice that they had made. Uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous piece. It is a three-footed uh, bowl maybe a powder bowl. I'm not 100% sure what this would have been. I, I would imagine this on a dresser set though, as part of a dresser set. Uh, it's got a beautiful design going all the way around. It's in absolutely fantastic condition. No chips, no cracks. Um, there's a very, very slight raising in some of the florals, but not enough for where I would consider this was moriage. It's just, it is hand painted, um, but it's not slip wear. But so you can, there is a little bit of texture so you can see that they're hand painted. But what was interesting about it is they put the price tag on the inside of the lid. Okay, that's fine. No big deal. But on the bottom, they actually had, and I have a feeling they didn't do this, but wherever they had gotten it from, there was a blue sticker, like, you know, kind of a larger version of a garage sale sticker. Uh, it was very blue. I don't know how something can be very blue. What I meant to say, it was very thick. Uh, and it was on there very, very stiffly. Uh, I was not the first person that had tried to peel it back and just with whatever glue or however long it had been on there, that thing did not want to come off. I mean, it was like, you could tell it was a sticker, so it was kind of flaking, but you couldn't get a lift. You couldn't really move it away. So the price was attractive enough that I felt, you know what, even if I have no idea, even if it's unmarked, this is a beautiful piece. Again, it's just a, a, a gorgeous piece of hand-painted porcelain in fantastic condition. There's a little bit of crazing, but again, assuming that this was the age that I thought it was, the crazing wasn't gonna be, you know, out of out of, uh, out of the norm. So I, had, I bought it, brought it home, let, it, let that sticker soak a little bit with a wet paper towel just on the sticker. I've uh, learned not necessarily to immerse any sort of hand painted items or cover it with a lot of a wet paper towel because suddenly things get loose that you didn't want to get loose. So I just covered that. And after enough time, I was able to peel that back off. And when I finished, I discovered it was Haviland Limoges. So why I, I have a feeling that even uh, Matthew Bullock did not know that because they did not price this as a piece of Haviland Limoges in this good of condition. Um, so I was very happy to pick this up as what they probably had considered either a Nippon piece or a German piece, still beautifully made. I was hoping actually for German or Bavarian or a Bavarian or Austrian, because you know, that's what happens in this household. That's what we like. Uh, but I'm also good with Limoges. France is fine. Uh, so this is again, I might actually put this on Etsy because with the Haviland label on it, it will attract the attention uh, again, for those who have followed my, uh, my videos in the past or just know about reselling Etsy is all about the keywords even more so than eBay. And so to have something like the Haviland and the Limoges region on there 
that is a term that people will probably stumble across. So, uh, you know, if somebody's interested in it, just like anything in this video, if you're interested in it, let me know, give me an offer, or I'll tell you what I want for it. And maybe I'll sell it to you outside of Etsy or my live sales. But for now, I was very happy to pick this up, very happy to take the, you know, use my gut feeling that this was a good piece, particularly at the price it was being offered at, and then just having that kind of cool payoff going, oh yeah, it's Haviland, it's Limo it's from Limoges, it's... It's a keep, well, not a keeper. It was a buyer so that I can sell it. So this last item may have been a mistake. I've talked about mistakes before. In some, world, in some ways, there are no mistakes. There are just learning lessons. Uh, and this is not, I really, to a certain extent, I have no regrets that I have purchased this. I'm getting a little concerned about how I'm going to ship it. But... I think it's worth it, but admittedly, this was purchased almost exclusively because I did a shop along video uh, at the Rustic Fox probably about a month or two ago, and I happened to talk about these. And so when I found one in the wild that was at a price point I could purchase to resell, I decided to pick it up. The downside is I no longer have my booth. So I have something very large and somewhat heavy that is going to cost a little bit to, to ship. So I'm going to, have to take that into consideration as I price it. Because what I found was a chamber pot. Or, as I can't remember now who said it, somebody put in the comments a thunder mug. Which, if you know what a chamber pot is, then it kind of, th thunder mug kind of has a very bizarre uh, accuracy to it. So the one that I saw at the Rustic Fox was, you know, similarly designed. It was a single handle like a giant mug it does not have a spout on the other side because it wasn't really designed to pour into anything it was designed as a receptacle for your bio waste but the one that was at the rustic fox did not have its lid so when i found this one with a lid in fantastic condition also decorated i decided i wanted to pick it up and i did get it at a pretty good price but i will say this probably weighs three or four pounds so this is going to be priced in such a way that if it has to ship long distances, hopefully it'll still be an attractive price, or maybe it'll have to go to someone a little bit closer. Because I do think as a decorative object, this has, it is, it's everything. It's got a, a cool looking handle with the matching lid. It's decorated on both the front and the back. It is very heavy duty, so it's basically ironstone. Um, it can look good in a variety of decor, you know, as long as you don't use it as a soup terrine, you know, this, this ends up just being one of those, again, a conversation piece where people will be like, oh, what's that? And just like if you've got a spittoon sitting in your, co in your corner, you probably don't use it. It's going to catch people's attention and you have a conversation about where you got it. Uh, this one is not marked, but you can see there's definitely some age. There is a line kind of a hairline on the bottom, you see that? I don't feel it through the glaze and I don't see it coming through the other side, but that, you know, that's a little troubling and I think that's why it was priced uh, the way it was priced. So this would have been better had I had it in a booth uh, because I wouldn't be dealing with shipping. Um, and you know, someday I will have another booth, so maybe I'll hold on to it to then, who knows? But I just thought this was a cool piece and I have not carried a chamber pot before. Uh, I do have a spittoon. I still haven't listed it. Um, but now that I talked about them on a video, figure, put my money where my mouth is, which suddenly has a really weird connotation when you're talking about a chamber pot. But I uh, picked it up and uh, got to make it available for sale. So... That is Matthew Bullock, the shop along and the haul video. So it got a little bit longer than I'd anticipated, so I do apologize for that, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you stuck around this far and you're not a subscriber, well, you are a dedicated individual. And I do uh, request that you jump on over and go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, it does, a pre uh, does help me build up my channel and it does help YouTube uh, send more people my way when they discover that uh, people actually care about what I have to say. If you are ever in the far, eh, you really can't call them suburbs anymore, but if you're ever about an hour outside uh, west of Chicago, about an hour and a half west of Chicago, uh, head over to Ottawa, go to the Matthew Bullock Auction House. Uh, they are a great group of people and always have a rotating uh, variety of selections. 
that uh, you can buy for yourself. Or if you're a reseller, you can usually get good enough prices, you can resell them as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Talk to you later. Bye. Well, show me a sign if you're wishing me to stay. Otherwise, I say goodbye and finish out the day. And that sunrise in the morning and you got nothing to say. Oh, that's when I'll be headed on my way.